quarters or whatever, or whatever it is. All right. Well, I am <clears throat> tasked with a very hard assignment. Um, I've spent the last week and a half the Spirit of God just pouring into me pertaining to a certain angle of Colossians, and we only have three, <clears throat> three of them left. And he's been pouring like, well, you know, we'll be doing this till Jesus comes back or whatever, you know, <laughs> however you look at that. And um, so <clears throat> not having enough time to fully get it where I want to, but I know that it will be by the next two classes. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and share from Colossians what the Lord has uh, begun. And I have to say... I guess this is a little bit of a disclaimer. I have to say that um, you may not be familiar with some of these concepts or even the Bible in certain areas, and it will be explained more in the next class, but I want to, as I go, I want to emphasize certain things, so I'm going to ask you to try to focus in on the specifics that I say this, this will be important. This will be on the test that God gives you when you, you know, <laughs> when you leave the classroom. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, so let's try that. We're in um, the book of Colossians, so you can turn there just to the book of Colossians, first chapter, but we're not ready quite yet to get into that. Um, but what I began to see by the Holy Spirit was the book of Colossians <clears throat> makes a whole lot of references to the feasts of Israel, okay? And specifically, he makes reference to the, the feasts that have to do with the harvest, okay? And there are two main feasts that have to do with that. The first one is first fruits, and the second one is tabernacles where in first fruits, the first ripe fruit that comes up, they had a feast day at that time or, or a time where everybody was up in Jerusalem already. And um, God was given the first ripe fruits. And if those fruits were accepted by God, the first fruits that happened early on in the year, then everything that grew after that in the harvest year would be accepted based on the first fruits. Okay. Now, Christ is the first fruits, and you're, you're more familiar with first fruits than you realize because the first fruits is exactly the same as the firstborn, but the firstborn deals with the firstborn of cattle and the firstborn of your sons and the firstborn of, you know, that sort of thing. But the first fruits is simply the same thing, but it deals with, um, yeah, we'll say crops, um, vegetation. <clears throat> um, so I noticed this pattern. I didn't notice it. The Holy Spirit just kind of went bang, and I went, oh, my goodness. This is, this is really what he's following here. And I, then I started noticing wording that I did, hadn't really noticed before. And um, uh, so I wrote this. The, the first fruits came forth at the early part of the year, but the major annual feast happened at the end of the year. Okay, so all of that has to do with Israel's feast during the year. But since that's passed away, the old covenant has passed away, it still has to do with us not keeping the feasts that they kept, but the fulfillment of that being fulfilled in us spiritually, okay? And uh, Paul even uses the words when he talks about it. In fact, I'll, I'll read it here in just a minute. But he talks about those things that pertain to those feasts, and they're just mere shadows. And then he says, but the reality is Christ 
and the body. Okay, so we're going to read the we're going we'll read these scriptures, but I've you know I've always applied that to uh, a different a different way. I I applied it to and this is a this is a problem we all have. I applied it to Christianity as we know it instead of knowing Israel's history and knowing the Old Testament and seeing Jesus as the fulfillment of that, not the fulfillment of something here, you know. Uh, that is supposed to become real. The realness of that is supposed to be in our lives through Christ because he's the fulfillment, but he wants to fulfill that in his body. Now, that's important. That will be on a test, <laughs> a real one, because it, it pertains to um, not just him, because, see, we say, well, Jesus did all this stuff, and it's the finished work, but it is, it's finished in him, but it's not finished in us, and that's part of what Colossians is all about. It begins with the first fruits being Christ, um, but then that has to pass down through the whole year until the whole harvest comes in. And the rest of that harvest will come, come forth through his body. <clears throat> so, um, so I wrote, the first fruits come forth in the early part of the year, but the major annual harvest happens at the end of the year. This means that from the time the first fruits came forth, there began the much greater task of preparing the ground, planting the seed, nourishing the crops, and finally harvesting the crops. Okay, so you know what that's like. I mean, there is this, there is this full reality of uh, that certain things, just, just ask a farmer or whatever, particularly if he farms, if he's farming different kinds of crops at different times, um, certain things, well, let me just use flowers, for example. Okay, so you go through the winter, everything's dead, and then what's the first fruits of flowers? What flower is that? Daffodil. <laughs> my favorite, because it represents why. It was my favorite before I, I understood that it was first fruit in relationship to flowers. But, okay, so it comes up, but then what happens? It dies back. And then something else comes. And uh, when I was in Georgia with my brother, he was showing me his garden, and he's into plants and flowers and all this stuff too, just like me. And so he, he, um, he said, "Okay, these. This is what comes up first. And then and we weren't even talking about this area. He was just showing me his garden. He goes, and these will come next, and then this. And he says, I've got it laid out where we will always have, you know, a beautiful." flower going going forth and um, <clears throat> okay so you can apply that to fruit okay there are certain things that come up early in the year and there are certain things that finish off the year and there are certain things that are in between that but the most important to God is what comes up first okay now let this be known what comes up first right on Passover, Jesus died, right? That was one, the, the feast of Passover. He died during that time. Remember, they're having the, the Passover meal, and this is my body, and da-da-da-da. And then, you know, the next day was Passover, and, and uh, he died, okay? He was put, put on a cross. All right. So, but the day that he rose from the dead was also on a feast, Feast of first fruits. Whoa. All right. So this is the this is the groundwork that we're going to be working on. But sadly, um, my preparations tonight are not uh, really ready to just spell all of that out in Hebrew history. It will be next week. But the thing that captured me, and the thing that he captured me with Colossians was not that Jesus was the first fruits and then at the end of, you know, at the end of the age or at the end of the harvest, that fruit will come forth in us. It'll just be an increase of God's first fruit. And that's why it's accepted, the whole harvest is accepted because the rest of the harvest is we get Christ formed in us. 
Okay, so he comes forth as the first fruit. He's accepted because everything else from the whole year that's being watered and prepared and, and planted and all that from the seed, and it's the same seed, and it'll be Christ in you that comes forth, okay? Yeah. In, in, a, in a full harvest, not just the beginnings, okay? So we see that with the historical, we see that with the, um, well, let me say, we see that with the pattern in Israel with their feast. We see that with the historical in relationship to Jesus, who was the first fruits. And then, you know, as I said, at the end of the age, or however you want to word that, the full harvest will come forth in his body. That's why it's called his body. And, and Colossians will literally use that in relationship to this because he's coming forth, not us. Does that sound good to anybody? Yeah. You, know, <laughs> you know, so, so, but there is this other angle, and that's, that's part of what the way I'm going to go at it tonight. And that is that when we receive Jesus, he doesn't automatically come forth. Just because you're saved doesn't mean Jesus is doing everything in you. The, even John the Baptist worded it well. He must increase and I must decrease. Okay? So... But there is this point where you begin to seek the Lord and you begin to hear, hey, um, God doesn't just want me to be a good Christian. He wants Christ and he wants him in me. And so, and I remember the first time I heard such things and I just went, whoa, that's not like what I was hearing before, <laughs> you know? That's not, you know, but then I, but as I searched the word and as I listened, I realized you know, I had never made room for the seed. Now, that sounds ridiculous in this sense. A farmer is doing everything he does to the land, to the soil, to the, to, 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 um, uh, the manure, putting it in the ground, whatever. All of that is for the bringing forth of the seed. That's what's in his mind. He's not just going, oh, I want to have a nice piece of land that's very broken. My land is very broken. You know, well, where's the seed? Well, I'm, I preach brokenness. You know, you see what I'm saying? All this stuff that's preached that doesn't have to do with the seed is ridiculous. Any farmer that said that to you, you would go, so what's your crop? Um, brokenness. <laughs> you know. <clears throat> All right. So, laying the template of, the, the feasts and the template of what happened historically when Jesus rose from the dead and became the first fruits and then the pattern it, as the harvest goes on and that Christ begins to be formed in us, that pattern is also personal. It's his, it's, it is historical in the sense of Israel's feasts. It is historical in the sense of what Jesus did 2,000 years ago when he rose as the first fruits, and then that's going to be fulfilled in time also. But it is also spiritual as it relates to us. And that is that we want, not, as I said, not just to become Christians, not just to be about Christianity, but we come to a realization, even if you've been saved 10, 15, 20 years, all of a sudden you hear that and you go, you, you set on that course. <clears throat> and on that course, um, sometimes it's a rough road because you begin to see more of you. Once you start emphasizing Christ, the enemy is going to attack you, right? Because he's the, he's the one. He, see, the word anti-Christ. He's not anti-Christian. He's not anti-you. Right? <clears throat> and the parable of the sower, which is about what? Sowing the seed and getting the harvest. Um, you have the first example, and that was some seed were sown by the wayside, and they didn't catch root because the fowls of the air, which are Jesus described when they asked him, what does this mean? The fowls of the air represent the devil, the demons that come to steal the word of God out of your heart. Okay? Well, the attack was not on you. It was on the seed. You see that? 
Okay. So, all of this has to do with the complete reversal of viewing things instead of it being about me or about you or about our religion, our American religion or whatever, however far you want to spread religion uh, from the emphasis being Christ, your heart begins to desire that. And so, so, let, so let's just paint a picture. And as, as I said, we'll show this in Colossians. Here's the picture. So you've been a Christian a while, and all of a sudden you start hearing about the reality of Christ being your life and you wanting it to be him. And so you begin to pursue him as that. And, um, uh, and even though you're in the word and you're saying, God, open the word, open my eyes, open my heart to see Jesus, I want Christ revealed, um, it doesn't happen immediately. But one day, though you've been in this ark with all these stinky animals, the dove, the Holy Spirit, comes flying through a little window with a little twig that is the first fruits of a new creation. It's the first fruits of Christ. It represents him. Okay. So, now, had Noah and everyone in there understood that, they would have gone, yeah, yeah, not, not even, you see, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have to do it about what's coming. They wouldn't have to see what's coming. They would go, this means it's here, and he's going to bring us into it, right? And so, <clears throat> so when that first fruit appears in us, it's Christ, and we go, oh, my God. This is Christ, it's not me, for the first time in my Christian walk. <laughs> you know? And there's joy, but when there's an understanding, and that's part of what we want to cover in, in the next three times we get together, we want to get this understanding because it'll liberate you. It'll keep you from, from um, um, well, let's put it this way. After the first fruits, and I'm talking now about the feasts of Israel. After the first fruits came up in Israel, there was a long dry spell before the next crop started coming up. Okay? All right. So now, if you're a farmer or a Christian, what do you go through when you start hitting that dry spell? <laughs> Fear, and, and you're going, you know, wow, I mean, I... It, I, we just had some, and it was the right fruit. And where is it now? And 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 we're, you know, and I'm I seem like I'm worse actually. Right? You understand? <clears throat> well, no, I didn't say you. <laughs> never mind. And say, do you live it? I said, do you understand? <laughs> but there is spiritually too, but, but also within the scope of what God is doing, he wants the reality of the first fruits. Like I said, we're not, I'm not explaining all of that tonight. I'm just telling you the fact of it. He wants the realities that we will get into to hold us through any dry spell because the promise of the it's like, again, the dove coming through that window, the first thing of any kind of life at all, except stinky life in an ark, um, is his life. All of the harvest is accepted by God based on the first fruit. And when that dove came through with the first fruit, that was it. In all reality, it was as good as done. Was it? Was it done? No, they were still in the ark. Was it done in the sense of Israel uh, after the first fruits? No, they were going through a long dry spell. But we, what we need to understand is the dry spell isn't always the lack of anything. It is his preparation of bringing forth the harvest, the seed, the everything, you know. So this, you've heard of the early and the latter rain, right? Okay, well the early rain waters the first fruit. The latter rain falls way harder in Israel. 
way more. And the ground is all dry and parched and all this, but they went ahead and put the seed in the ground, believing for the latter rain. And the rain falls and the harvest starts coming up way faster than it would before. All right. So we'll get into that more and more in the different uh, sessions or something. Yeah. I'm not prepared to do that. Um, uh, so let me make sure that I've got, because I don't want to miss anything here. Um, in Colossians, Paul lays the spiritual work of God in our lives over the template of the Feast of Israel. He starts with emphasizing the importance of the first fruits. So he's going to, but see, he, it's so cool the way the Spirit of God showed this to me because I didn't know it. I didn't see it like that. I mean, I've seen so much in Colossians, but when he starts showing that this has a, a, a beginning and he's sharing with them, and we've already covered the first part, but we'll read some, you know, shortly again. But it has a beginning, and the beginning is the Word. And, you know, he's saying get into the Word and, and grow up in Him and the wisdom and all that kind of stuff. And we'll, we'll reread that in just a little bit. But, um, but then he brings it down to verse 27. And he starts talking about Christ in you, the hope of glory, the first fruits. That's the first fruits. Because from the rest of the chapter on, he's going to be developing the harvest. Okay? But Christ in you, all of a sudden, I got him. He's in there. I've got the first fruits of that reality. And anyone who's ever really began to really know the Lord by revelation has experienced that. You see Jesus and then... You know, you still you still see things in you that are not him yet. The full harvest hadn't come in you. The full harvest hadn't come. And God is working towards you being, and I'll use a word that he used early on in that, that first chapter, being fruitful. Being fruitful the results of the first fruits. The, and here's the way I word it a lot. God wants a harvest of the first of the first fruits. The first is capitalized when I write it. Jesus is the first that came up. Right? He's the um, firstborn from the dead. Firstborn, first fruits, same thing. It's the firstborn that comes up in this new life, but that's the same life we've all received. So the fact that that life was brought forth there and I have that life in me, that at the first fruits is the hope and promise that I'll have it come forth in me. Now I'm gonna spell that out when we, you know, next couple of classes, I'm gonna show you that Paul literally, that's his argument. <laughs> Where he's, he is just going, look. And he never, he never says, now what I'm talking about is the feast uh, of Israel. He just shares it because it's life to him. You know, he's not trying to re-establish the feast of Israel. He's trying to bring forth the living reality, the fulfillment of what it all was about in the first place. <clears throat> um, so I, I read this. He starts with the with the emphasizing the importance of the first fruits. Then he develops its its relation to a greater harvest, which is yet to come. All right. So he's talking to the he's talking to the Colossians, and you know that there's struggles. There's these people who've brought in you know other teachings and other things, and he's you know remember how he was grieved over that and everything, but he's still he's like a farmer that's that's digging the dirt and he's trying to get it, the seed in them so that the first fruit seed will blossom. And um, so that's where he's going. And he literally takes it from the first fruit and he ends with it being the harvest in them. All right. <clears throat> so again, he is speaking spiritually as it pertains to us and is not referring to the Gentile churches having to keep Israel's feasts. He sets forth the fact that Israel's feast, with all their requirements, were mere shadows of what we now have the fulfillment. 
the reality of them are realized in Christ and his body. Okay, so what did I just say? I said the feasts of Israel were shadows. But a shadow, I mean, if I had a real bright light over there and I had a whiteboard here and I held up my hand, I mean, you can still see somewhat of an outline of the shadow. But if it was really bright and everything, you would see the shadow, but you wouldn't see the full reality of a hand. You would see the basic outline. You could kind of understand. Even if it was a silhouette, you could have a basic understanding of my face, but not really. We have that with Jesus until it becomes Jesus, not the shadow, not just, the, not just that. So uh, look in Colossians 2. And if I sound excited, I am. <laughs> Colossians 2, verse 16. Well, 16 and 17. And before we read that, let me just reiterate that. Um, he's saying the feasts were a shadow of something that's supposed to be real with us, right? Okay? And I wrote down, and the reality of them is realized in Christ as the firstborn when he came, or the first fruits when he came forth in resurrection and in us as the ground for the harvest to come. But that ground is special ground. It's his body. He's the life of it. So of course the fruit of Christ can come forth out of us. Amen? All right, so let's read this. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink or in respect of a uh, feast day or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come. What does the next part say? But the body is of Christ. He's saying, uh, you're trying to do all these feast things to please God under the old covenant. And he's saying that, and because he's already said in the first chapter, Christ in you is the hope of glory. Now he's saying, he's talking not about you and the first fruits. Now he's beginning to talk about the harvest. And he's saying, don't let people put you in a situation religiously that you have to measure up by do this or don't do that. And he'll, he uses those words even more in another place we'll see. Um, uh, and trying to please God through the outward because he's saying the, the reality is Christ the first fruit and that reality will manifest in the body which are a shadow of things to come but the body is of Christ. His body's going to show him. His body will bring forth his life, his fruit, manifestations of life, manifestations of life. And that's what fruit is manifestations of life. So many Christians are trying to bring forth fruit without the life or with their life. And since they don't have any life, <laughs> there's no manifestation of it. They're just trying hard to, they're doing the same thing here. They're, they've latched onto a religion that's not saying keep the feast days and da da da. What it's saying is uh, go to church, uh, pay your tithes, um, um, be sure and pray, uh, read the Bible, all this kind of stuff, and then you will be what God wants. And your, your question should be, and what would that be? And he would say, a good Christian. Then you'll be what God wants. What is that? Then you'll be a good Christian. But this doesn't mention Christianity at all. This mentions Christ and his body. All right. So, you know, I really didn't want to go off too much, but, you know, I have that problem, don't I? Okay, Jesus' body. Let's, put, let's just say this was Jesus' body. And Jesus' life was in it. What do you think is going to come out of that body? Jesus' life. Because when he walked the earth, that's what came out of it. Okay, so when he died, he got a new body, us, and the life was put in us, right? 
What do you think is going to come out of that? It's supposed to be the son, but see, he's, what he's doing, what Paul is doing is the right thing. He knows that the first fruits is the life that must fill the body, the first of the first fruits, or the first from the dead, the first life. Well, it's not just the first life, but it certainly is the first appearing of life, but it is, um, it is that, it's that life that the body is going to have, and as they grow in him, as they know him, as they become conformed to his image, the harvest of his fruit's going to start coming forth in them. Make sense? Okay. So, just to repeat and summarize, if Jesus is in his body over there, this physical body when he walked the earth, and he gives up that body and he makes us his body, how do you think Jesus is going to act in us? Okay. Okay. So anybody see why he must increase and we must decrease? You know, Cause, because his good harvest can overtake our bad seeds that we've been. I mean, that sounds good to me. You know, and the more you plant and the more you keep doing that, the more it'll overtake the bad harvest. Praise God. All right. Now. I'm giving you the simplified version of all this tonight. Well, I mean, in this sense, the, Paul is going to give some, and not just here in Colossians, he is going to give some excellent explanations of all this. And it's just like, oh, 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 that's what this is talking about. So if you can kind of get the concept tonight, then when we start really laying this out, you'll just go, yeah. I mean, tonight you might be going, okay, I'm not sure if I'm getting this. Don't worry about it. Okay. I believe the seeds are going in. <laughs> Praise God. All right. Um, so another translation put those scriptures this way. Let no man act as your judge in regard to food or drink or in respect of a feast or of a new moon or Sabbath days, uh, things which are mere shadow of what is to come. And then again, I read the King James Version, but the body is Christ. Stop. Stop being religious. Stop trying to do it by you or by what religion tells you. Know Jesus. Be his body. Let him start doing the, the work in you. Let him, and it's not a work. I mean, it, it is a work in that he's, the Spirit of God is working on you, but it is fruit. No, you know, you don't, you know, you don't go, okay, I want to, mm, I read that in the Bible. I'm, I'm going to bring forth that fruit. I'm going to bring forth love. Okay, here I go. Mm, mm, love, love, love. You don't bring it forth. You bear it. Right? You don't see a tree going, oh, I've got to get these apples out, man. You know? They just bear it. The life brings it forth. All right. <clears throat> so, um, uh, from these verses, the apostle is setting forth two main concepts, and that these are not the main concepts we'll get into later, but they're important right now. The first is to make clear to his readers that the Old Testament feasts were no longer a valid part of the New Covenant. Can I get amen on that? All right, and then number two, the second is to show that though the physical feasts are no longer to be adhered unto, yet they do have spiritual application. Okay, so, <clears throat> gosh, uh, so, you know, we say Jesus, when Jesus came, he fulfilled everything and it's over with. All right, well, so that would mean that everything I'm saying is not true then if he did that because he would fulfill all the feasts and they would have no bearing on us but in truth, they don't have bearing on us. They have bearing on the life if we're his body. Yeah. It's still Jesus because it's Jesus' body. I'm not Jesus, but I'm a member. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you could say that finger is a member of me. But that finger is not me in the sense that it's not me. <laughs> it's not, you know. You see what I'm saying? But it absolutely is me. Uh, and we are his body. And we have to, 
there's so much good stuff to this. I, I really hope I can get to all of it. All right. All right, so I want to go back now to Colossians 1, and I want to reread some of the scriptures that we went over earlier. Okay? Colossians 1 and verse 9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Okay, so what is that saying? He's saying at this stage, at this early stage, you Colossians, because they, they were Gentiles, they didn't know all this stuff. He's saying you need to be filled with the seed. You need to understand, you need to open your heart up, you need to have the Spirit of God explain this to you. You need to realize that uh, I wrote uh, um, that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, the reality of the first of the first fruits. We need the reality of the first of the first fruits. I don't care where you are in the harvest, the first over here is what counts. That's where Paul continually points, but not after Christ, but not Christ, in Christ, all fullness, um, complete in him, in the first fruits. Yeah, well, it's gonna, it'll, get, it'll, it'll start ringing as we get into the, some more of this. <clears throat> and then that you might walk worthy, okay? So now the first thing he said was, um, Go to the beginning, go to the first fruits, look at him, look at the first of the first fruit, know him, get filled up with him, that you might walk, that it might become your walk, not just your teaching or your doctrines. Life, moving your feet. Glory to God. All right? That you might walk uh, worthy, and I put bringing forth your own harvest. You start with the wisdom at the beginning and looking at the first fruit, but now you get that in you and you start walking it out so that the, the first fruit, the first of the first fruit can bring forth a harvest in you. In other words, Christ comes forth out of you. Okay. Too technical? I've been dating this for 30 years. 40, yeah. Or more. <clears throat> All right. So, um, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful. Is that, did I put that in your Bible or was that always there? He's literally walking the path of the feast from the, from the first fruits down to our life into tabernacles where we all dwell in tents together we all come together and we, we, we have all the fruit that's coming forth and it glorifies God. Um, <clears throat> being fruitful in every good work. In other words, it's the fruit of the first fruit, Christ in the whole body. Um, increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, the first power, Everything is resting on the first of the first fruit. It is not resting on the rest of the seed and the harvest except the seed be Christ in us and the fruit be Christ in us. Okay, so, um, so I said here the first thing they do is they are, are to fill up on the reality of Christ in them. Okay, but in verse 10, the inward must become outward. They must walk it out. He wants him which is the first fruits to fill them as a great harvest. The walk is what? It is a manifestation of what is within. It is the first life signs of the first fruits of life. That's what we do. That's what we have. We have that and then we begin to walk it out and the more we know him and the more we, we um, uh, make this a life, Walking in Jesus instead of a religion, walking in rules, the more it begins formed in us. 
It is the first life signs of the first fruits of life, being fruitful in every good work. It is proof of reality. It is the dove bringing back the twig, proving that new life was there. It is the proof of reality. So for us, now remember, we said there's the pattern with Israel, it's the feast. We said there's the pattern with Jesus when he died and then he rose again on the feast of first fruits and then there's going to be a great harvest at the end. And it's the same thing with us. There is the first signs of Christ's life as we begin to seek him and know him and with that, that once that dove shows up with a, a twig, we have all assurance. And I don't expect you to have all assurance tonight. But we will have all assurance that this has to come about. If we're, if we're lined up with him, if we're lined up with religion, no wonder it's not coming about. We're not even trying to get the first of the first fruits to come forth in us and bring forth a harvest. We're not even looking in that direction. But if we're lined up with him, it has to come about. <clears throat> All right, so um, Colossians 1.27, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the first fruits of a greater harvest. Christ in you, the hope of glory. The hope, okay? And I wrote, the hope is not pointed toward full maturity of the big harvest. Hope, uh, is, but the first sign of first fruits, Christ in you. Okay, so, so look at this from God's point of view. He's looking at you, and he's, he has a hope. And his hope, he's not going, oh, I hope one day, far away, there'll be this great multitude of people that are his body, and they'll bring forth his fruit, and it will be glorious. He's not doing that. He's saying, look at the first fruits, Christ in you. Get that established first, and that'll do it. Because you'll always look there. You'll know the end from the beginning. That's the scripture. <laughs> well, didn't Jesus say, look, I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He could also say, I'm the end and the beginning. Right? <laughs> the first and the last. The first fruits and the last big harvest in my people, in my body, rather. More specific. So, uh, in Colossians 2, we're going to go back there, and these verses show how that happens, okay? Would you like to see how it happens? Okay. And would you like to see a flow? Good. Came to the right class. Amen. Colossians 2, and we're going to start with verse 19 and go through possibly 23. Okay. Now, remember, he's talking to these, these guys that are bringing in other things other than Christ as the focal point, as Christ as the life, as Christ as the, the, we're complete in him. Remember, all of those things have come, you know, within these things. So he says, the problem is not holding the head from which the body, okay, what are we talking about? The head of the harvest is the first fruits, which is Christ. The body is the harvest that is manifested in the body. Right? Didn't we already see that in the scriptures? So, um, so he's literally now applying that and saying, not holding the head from which all the body, I wrote, of the coming harvest, by joints and bands, having nourishment ministered, knit together, increases with the increase of God. You hold the head. That's what you... You don't, you know, you don't, um, you don't look at the first fruits and then go, oh, that was good. Okay, now, you know, you turn your back on the first fruit and start walking during the, the dry spell. <laughs> well, I'm a Christian or I'm of God, and I'm, you know, and 
Seems like I, you know, the dove isn't here, just vultures going around my head, you know. I don't know what's wrong. Why is it so dry? Why is it so, what is wrong? My God, what's wrong is you. You're not holding the head. You're not looking to the first, of the first fruits. But see, to look at that, you need, and for that to be effective, you're going to need to have me share next time a little further on this, okay? So I don't expect faith to just go, oh, my God. But, but you know that this is true because your spirit bears witness that this, this is God's way. Not holding the head from which uh, the body, uh, from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment. Here comes the harvest coming up out of them. Joints and bands having nourishment increases with increase. You've got an increase of a harvest coming up. I mean, it's amazing. Well, you, okay, I'm not very good at sharing this, but you should have heard it when the Holy Spirit started this. It was blowing my mind. I'm just going, oh my God, they were increasing. And it doesn't just say, and you increase in Christianity. It says the increase of God. It's his life. It's him. Okay, and then wherefore... Uh, wherefore, if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why as though living in the world are you subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not. Okay, so he's going, look, you're dead. The first fruits is your life. And he's going he's gonna to spell this out even more in some other places. The first fruits is Christ. And that's your life. And don't ever leave that. And, and, and no matter where you're at in the process, Hold the head. No matter where you're in the process, keep your eyes on him and, and identify with him. There's my life. There's my hope. There's the hope of any harvest at all. Firstborn in me, the hope of a greater harvest. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Okay? So, um, wherefore, if you be dead, okay, because you are. You were crucified with Christ. Um, then why as though living, why are you acting as if you're living? That's what the King James says. This, this is the exact wording in order. Why as though living? <laughs> we go, why as though li living in the world? Why am I acting like I'm living in the world? I'm living over here in Christianity. No, you're not supposed to be living if you're dead. He said if you're dead. <laughs> stop living and, and stop living in Christianity. I know, one day I'll die for saying all this stuff because people go, well, you're not, what, you're not a Christian. When I was in Georgia, I, I, I blew it. I said, God was not a Christian. Y'all have heard it and you didn't kill me, but, you know, they're Baptists. And then I went, I went, he's never read a Bible. He, he does, he's never prayed once. He's never pray, he, does, he didn't pray before the foundation of the world. He just, they just talked to one another, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They weren't going, oh, oh, you know, all this junk, you know. And if, and if you shake all over when you pray, that's fine. I'm just saying, God, I, what, and what I explained to him is that it, he didn't have a religion. It's his nature. He doesn't answer to a book or a set of rules, touch not, handle not. That's why it's saying this. He's saying, you need the life of the first fruits. I am Alpha and Omega. You know, here I am. I'm in. I'll do it all. I'm, I'm the fullness. I'm the length. Paul said, he, oh, the length and the breadth and the height and the depth. You know, he's seeing this and it's blowing his mind. Can we get our minds blown? Okay. Um, and Christianity is a lot of that. Well, don't touch that. Do this. You know, don't do that. All this kind of stuff. How about if we stop trying to fulfill all these ordinances and we just seek Jesus with all of our heart? I'm not saying, you know, if you're not going to seek Jesus and you don't want to be conformed to him, then go do the stuff. Don't touch that. Don't do this. You know, the law is for the lawless. You know, and you, you're wanting to do that, go do it. But if you want Christ, then you're giving too much attention to this earth, to this world, to this wise living in the world, he says. 
<laughs> Why are you acting like you're living here? <laughs> you don't live here, you live in Christ. Um, after the commandments and doctrines of men, which, are th which things have indeed a show of will wisdom and will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. And basically he's saying it looks good to other people because it looks like it has wisdom in your will worship. Your, it's just an act of your will instead of the life of Christ. And you look very hum uh, humble. Um, uh, and you're neglecting the body. When it says neglecting the body, it says you're, you're um, you know, be, you know, I like, sorry, like the Catholics with the thing, and you just, be, you know, oh, I, I just do this to, you know, whatever. Jesus, <laughs> by his stripes, you're healed. Stop making more stripes. <laughs> and uh, so. Okay, so let's so right after verse 23 is chapter 3, and uh, let's do Colossians 3:3. 3, 3. For ye are dead, and your life, what life? Well, who's the life? The first fruits. That's the life of the harvest that's going to come and bring forth fruit in all of you crazy people. <laughs> that's that's it. And the hope isn't in you that day that you'll get Christ. The hope is that you'll focus on Christ in you now. That's the hope, God's hope, because if you stay attached and focused in the first fruits, all that will be accepted. But if you start trying to become accepted down here with your little harvest, your little pitiful garden, little, you know, look, I got a little planter. You know, a little thing coming up, and it looks really spiritual. He's going to go, I don't accept that. If that's not the first fruit, that's not the life of the first fruit that's filling up the harvest, that's you down here hoping you'll be acceptable. You know, I'm trying. I know, you're very trying. <laughs> and I have put on, oh, no, for you are dead, and your life, the first fruits, is hid with Christ and God. Okay, there it is. You see the first fruits, or, or you understand it with Israel, and then you see it in his resurrection, and you say, I don't see it in me. What does he say? Um, your life is hid there in the first fruits. You're looking here instead of there, and that is what's here. But you have to keep your focus on that which is him and that which is settled in the heart of the Father. Okay? The harvest comes forth as a result of that very life. Right. Okay, so uh, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear. See, it didn't say when Jesus, who is our Savior, uh, our soon coming King, comes back in the air. Read it. I didn't change it. When Christ, who is your life, appears. Yeah. Do, I mean, do you see that? I, I've heard this quoted so many times. And I go, oh, this is about Jesus when he comes back in this guy. It's not referring to that. This whole thing is you're dead. The next verse is going to be you're dead. <laughs> and here's your life. I mean, it's not Jesus is going to come back in the sky. And when your life appears, you're dead. You never hear anybody teach that. <laughs> um, when Christ who is your life appear, then shall we appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your bad fruit members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetous, which is idolatry. Okay, why? What is it saying right here? It's saying put that to death, but it's not saying you put it to death. You have to reckon on the work of the cross. But that's not even the issue, and he's going to get to the issue in a minute. And why is that not the issue? Because a, a strong, good harvest will overtake a weak, bad harvest. It will. So, the, so, the, uh, so verse 10, and have put on the new man, the first fruits guy, 
which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. But Christ is in all. That's, I mean, it says he's all and in all, but let's focus on this harvest, this big harvest that's going to come. He's in all of them. The first fruit, Christ, is in all of them. And the hope of the harvest is not you. Yeah. It's not your, I'll do it. I love Jesus, so I'll, I'll give him what, if I have to have another hernia, I'll do it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> no, no, it's, he's my life. When he appears, he starts bringing forth fruit. I'm putting on that new man. I am with him in his heart, in his plan, and in the fulfillment of the feast in a true and real way that glorifies God from start to finish, and it glorifies God by his son. Um, Christ is all. Put on the fruit of the harvest, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness, mind, meekness, long suffering. This is, every bit of this is the fruit of the first that fills each one of us. We all have the first, right? Jesus? Did everybody get the... I mean, okay. So the day Jesus rose from the dead was the first fruits, right? Nobody else rose from the dead at that time. Not, not in that reality. Not as first fruit. He rose from the dead. And our resurrection is him. Now, I'm not going to get into that right now. But our resurrection is him. Any hope of any other kind of resurrection better be Christ. I am, I am the resurrection and the life. It better be the first fruits. It better not be us thinking, well, I didn't touch this. Can you imagine standing before God? Well, I didn't touch this and I didn't do that. And, you know, I kept away from that and da 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 da. And he's, you know, he looks at you and, you know, just goes, Jeez, you didn't have any fun, and you're still going to hell because you don't have Jesus. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I'm probably wrong on that, but anyway. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I mean, if you think of it like that, you're going, you know, you would say, you mean I could have had all kind of fun, and, you know, if I'm going to go to hell anyway? Anyway, but... <laughs> Another person would go, you, you know, I was really religious. I didn't do any, I didn't have any fun for you. You know, <laughs> I'm so sad for you. <clears throat> and above all of these, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to that which also you're called in one body, and be ye thankful. Okay, why are we thankful? Well, we're called in one body. So we are all one body here at this church, and you ought to be thankful for that. Is that what he's saying? See, Scott got it. That's not what it's not saying. Well, you know, we're all one body right here, and just be thankful for it. You know? Or, well, we're all one body, all Christians everywhere, we're in one body, and we ought to just be thankful for that. We are thankful for Jesus. We're thankful that we're the body of the life of Christ. That's, that'll make you happy. You know, looking around, everybody going, I'm one with these people forever. <laughs> Dang, and you're telling me to be thankful? You know? <laughs> but, but when you realize it's Christ and we all have that life, we need to be thankful. That, yay for the first fruits. We're, we're all down here after the, the dry spell, and, but before the, the latter rain falls and we're all dried up and everything. And we're going, man, I am not thankful for this because look at us. We're all a bunch of dried up grapes. You know, the closest we come to resurrection is we look like raisins. <clears throat> well, however that translates. <clears throat> but, but there is that, that reality. I don't care how we look. I don't care how dry I am. I don't care how much I'm missing right now. I don't care how much uh, 
I still stand on the first fruits that we're accepted and that he will in his time bring forth the rain that he will bring, and why? For us, no! So that he'll get his son, the harvest of his son coming up out of all of us and it'll be the fruit of his life and that the joy of the Father. We're going, so we're in, we're all dry and all that stuff, but we're going, but this, but he's, he's gonna do this for his son. And he made us his body for his son. And there's, there's hope in this because it's his son. And the fruit of it isn't us. And dried up people, can you, can you say, thank you, Jesus, and be ye thankful? <laughs> Call in one body and be ye thankful. And they all go, yes. <laughs> yeah. this, is, this is called good news. <laughs> Anyway, okay, I need to stop. Do I have two minutes left? <laughs> the time is gone. <clears throat> I know, but I, I think I need to stop. All right, so believe it or not, uh, in relationship to all this reality that the Holy Spirit showed me, and I'm trying to s just set the stage, I believe that I have sown the seeds that he asked me to sow tonight. I believe I've done that faithfully. And that God will therefore um, water this and will strengthen this and, you know, will we'll work this in us. And so I want you to be in prayer, please, for the next um, two times that we meet before that's the end of Colossians. Um, because what great things yet he's got for us in this reality and i'll be praying for you that the that when when i start sharing the rest of what he does that it will be like little seeds that start popping up and going, oh that's what he was saying oh that oh you know and that god will be able to bring forth an increase of christ as a result of this and it'll be such assurance to you. It'll, it'll help you so much when you feel like you're the worst, you know. Because <clears throat> you can still be the worst and know if you want his son, he wants it. And he already put the, the first of the first fruits in you, his son. And he's going to do it. And there are good reasons, see, not just me saying that and have faith in that. We need to see it in the word of God more. Father, we ask you to just prepare our hearts for, um, for what you want shared, what you shared with me, but you didn't share it with me for me. Um, you want us to um, have our assurances based on Christ and not us, not, not our ability to touch not or taste not or do not this or that, but on our heart's belief that the first fruit has made the whole harvest acceptable already and that you have already have a plan for all of the harvest to come forth and the fruit of the life of Christ to be manifested through the body. Thank you for using that term regularly throughout these scriptures and helping us to, to see the, the, the head of the body as the first fruits from which everything flows down like Aaron's beard, when they poured the oil on him as high priest, it flowed down his beard and his clothes and all the way down to his feet. That if it's there with the head, it's going to eventually flow to us. And we thank you for that. We love you. And we wait upon you to hear your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All righty. No Kelly class, so y'all can go out and remember that stuff I said? <laughs>